So today we're gonna be going over one of the newest Rolexes that I personally didn't think I was ever gonna see in person. Now, before I get into this review, I wanna say that this isn't a review about another hype watch. Why? Well, because nobody's even heard about this watch. It's the Rolex Yachtmaster in white gold, 42 millimeter with the rubber strap with full Pave diamonds from factory. Reference number is 226679TBR. Does anybody know what TBR stands for? Because I, I really do not know. I would go ahead and say it must be to be rich, I guess, because you're gonna need to be rich to buy this thing. If you aren't following my YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that button now. So when Rolex's most recent release, when they came out with all the new watches, there was a list separate from all the ones that had all these new pieces that came out. One of them included the Eye of the Tiger in yellow gold with the whole pave down the bracelet. Another one was a crazy sky dweller with full diamonds everywhere. No one's even seen it or heard about it. Although I've heard there's been a couple of them floating around the hands here in Miami. One of the ones that caught my eye the most was this one right here. Ever since the day they came out with the Yachtmaster white gold and 42 millimeter, I thought to myself, home run. Again, not that I think that watches should be big and bulky, but this watch fits really good on the wrist, imagining that perhaps it didn't have all the diamond work. The second that I saw that they put a full diamond bezel with diamond lugs and crown guards, I said, home run. Why? Because look at this thing. Out here in the sun, it just flashes crazy. But then again, it's not over the top, you know, with the bracelet and everything. So immediately when I saw that watch, it's one of those pieces that caught my eye. Reminds me of some of those watches from back in the day when they used to have the Daytonas with all the flash. Remember those? It's been a while since they've been doing those. Yes, of course, they did the Eye of the Tiger with the rubber strap. Not that I don't like that watch because it is a boss watch, but this one right here, the fact that it's just one simple clean color, white stones, white case, black strap, black dial, for me is a total hit. Something about that bling that just hits. Like this is something that I would wear, you know, with my usual attire black t-shirt and vans and some sneakers and stuff like that, you know? This is the type of watch I guess to wear often, but at nighttime, I think is when this watch really hits, you know? When the diamond's really gonna hit, it's probably gonna be at nighttime. So if you ever had a chance to look at factory Rolex diamonds, you have to understand, these guys use the best. I mean, everything is D color, flawless, and for the round stones, they use a very specific cut. I don't know the exact specifications, but Rolex diamonds shine like almost no other diamonds do. They have the best quality saved for themselves. One of the things you realize about factory diamond bezels from Rolex, when they have the baguettes, Astra cut, however you wanna call them because we can spend all day talking about really what cut it is. I personally think it's like an Astra cut on there, but whatever. The point is, is that they fit so perfect to each other's that there's absolutely no gaps. That's one of the first things that people ask me when they say, hey Eric, how can you tell if a bezel, especially a baguette bezel, is factory or not? Well, first thing you're gonna look at with your loop is how tight the diamonds are. They are each fitted one at a time. Another thing that I love about this watch is that at the 12 o'clock position on the rotating bezel, they left the triangle. Another great touch. I feel like everybody that showed me this watch goes, did you see the diamond that was on top, the perfect triangle? And I thought to myself, yeah, it's kind of like the Saru. It's the same thing. It's just the same diamond, just with white diamonds all the way around. This is the type of diamond watch that you want to wear when you really want to show some true class. Well, you know how it is. The common public is going to say that watches that are diamonded out are just too flashy. They're a ghetto or they're too shout out or whatever it is that you want to say. But when you have a factory piece like this that's done so tastefully, it kind of puts it on another level. When I compare this to the Frost that I most recently reviewed, I'll take this every day and twice on Sunday. This for me is just more of a fit. The only thing that I would suggest on this watch that I 
kind of would have liked more would be maybe a pave sides of the case and maybe even down the middle of the buckle. But Rolex knows what they're doing. They just wanted to give it a very minimal touch. The lugs are not very overpowering and I feel what does all the talking on this model is the bezel. I would say the only setback about this watch is the fact that, well, nobody's seen it. So when they see it, they're gonna think it's aftermarket. That, that's the only, the only thing that I think about is that, that they might just think it's aftermarket because, you know, it's not publicized anywhere. Nobody's seen it. I'm trying to understand how come Rolex hasn't really marketed this watch that much. I get it. I mean, you can't even walk in nowadays and pick up a Submariner at retail. What makes you think you're gonna walk in and get this? But I'm just wondering why you don't really see it that much. It was almost like they did this big release of all the new models, the 41 millimeter subs and all that, you know, the Jubilee Braces Sky Dweller. But then we had these novelty watches that came out with all these gem sets, but don't show that to nobody. Keep these to the side. I don't get it. I, I don't know why they wouldn't want to showcase how nice this watch is. For me, I think it was one of my favorite releases out of all the watches that just came out. And I actually was shocked when I walked into my buddy's office and saw this sitting on his desk because, I, I don't know, I just didn't even think that I would see one. You don't see these watches. There aren't any out there. And I wonder what you think about it at home. Prices. This watch retails for $109,000. That's crazy. It's crazy to think that the bezel alone has a value of over $50,000 compared to the standard one with no diamonds. It's crazy. Absolutely absurd. But then again, you are paying for the best. If you're gonna buy this watch right now in the gray market or in the second hand or whatever you wanna call it today, because we can't keep up with what people wanna label this market, I would say you're gonna be spending anywhere from 175 to 200,000, depending who has it, because when you have a piece like this that's so unique, it's all about what the person wants for it and what the next guy is willing to pay. With the prices being said, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's gonna be quite some time before I can get one of these for my personal collection because chances of me getting one at retail are pretty slim. Yes, guys, I'm just like you at home. I don't get watches at retail either, especially since they all kind of know who I am. I'm going to have to wait a while, but personally, this is a watch that I would like to one day have in my collection. The only thing I hope is that by the time I do finally get the opportunity to get one for me to keep, my taste will be the same, and I still like this watch. Another thing that would be very interesting to see, but at the same time, may just be over the top, would be a pave dial on this watch. The pave dial would probably be like, <sighs> crazy. It'd be a lot of ice, <laughs> and the retail is probably gonna be $165,000. But at the same time, like I mentioned earlier, I really like the contrast of this black dial. And as crazy as it sounds, this is the first Rolex with an Oyster Flex strap that I would probably buy without even thinking about it. Because I don't know if you guys heard me say this before, I am not completely crazy about the Oyster Flex strap. I love the look of the Oyster Flex strap. What I don't like are those wings in the inside. I feel like it makes the strap pop out a little bit too much. I'd like the strap to lay a little bit more down on my skin. That's just my, that's just my opinion. Like I said it before, I'd probably take an X-Acto knife to the wings and the inside of the rubber and just cut them clean off. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what I would do. I also love that it's sporty and flashy at the same time. So with the rubber strap and being a Yachty, it's very, very sporty, but with the diamonds, Feel free to comment below what you think about the Yacht Master 42 with the factory diamonds. And if you like this video, like and share it with somebody else. Also, subscribe to my new YouTube channel.